Hello, everyone, and welcome. Happy Valentine's Day. I am super excited to be here today. This is previously recorded, but we know it's going to be Valentine's Day. So I wore my heart shirt and I'm sending you lots of love today, whether you're sharing it with a special life partner or maybe it's just your family, your mom, your dad, your children, uh, maybe it's yourself. And that is just as important. And we are going to be talking today about your relationship with your dreams, which is perfect for Valentine's Day and how, um, you know, the most important relationship is yourself. This comes from Amanda, our guest coming on. Hopefully she can rechannel that. It was so good. It was like, what better relationship than the relationship that you have with your dreams that comes from your soul? Something like that. It was, I can't regurgitate it. Um, I don't know if she'll be able to either. Anywho, thanks for landing here today. If you don't know me, I'm Jennifer Hart. I am pleased to meet you and say hello. I'd love to hear where you're from. If you're watching this on the replay, give me a hashtag replay and we will be monitoring the comments, answering any questions that you have, saying hello. I always love to see where everyone's tuning in from or more importantly, how did you get here? I love to see the path of the universe and how sometimes these videos just pop up. Someone won't see my stuff for, I don't know, months. And then all of a sudden here I am on their feed and it's like the perfect thing they needed to hear today. That just fills my heart and my soul. I am a connector and a soul guide. I connect people that are seeking personal growth, development, and are on a path of spirituality, whether they know it or not, to the information, the events, the resources, tools, and people who can help guide them along the way. How I have been doing this is through these connected interviews. And then I started some networking events. I do two uh, monthly networking and I call them networking because that's what most people would know them as. But what they really are is connection events. They're uh, set in place to build deeper connections with people and not to just go in and build these surface level connections. And then that has now turned into the Connected Soul Network, which is a membership featuring explorers, just people that are wanting to attend the events to learn more about themselves. They're on a path of self-exploration, growth, discovery, and spirituality. And then we have our guides. Our guides are people like Amanda. They're coaches, they're healers, they're practitioners. They're anyone that can help guide us on on our journey so that we can learn more about ourselves. We can grow, we can heal, and we can just become better people um, for ourselves, which then will ripple out into our family, to our friends, to our communities, and into the world. That is my personal mission. And I'd love to invite you to become a member if you're not one already. Um, we have two options, like I said, the explorers and the guides. You can check both out, see which one is the path I love to make it like an adventure theme, you know, like we're on a tour guide adventure um, because we are. That's what life is about. And we're we're on this discovery tour and uh, see which one is the best one for you. Uh, we have monthly options and year long options. If you want to do the work and be committed, we would love to have you. We're full of amazing people, great community, accountability and support. And we are going to talk about some of the amazing uh, events that we have coming up with Amanda as well. So I would love to tell you a little bit about Amanda. I told you today we're talking about building a relationship with your dreams. And we have Amanda Schumann, who is a dream work and life coach with one foot in Canada and the other in Guyana. I hope I said that right. Amanda Schumann takes the lessons of each lifestyle to heart, leaving her career as a federal food inspector to move her family to rural South America. She learned what school didn't teach her life skills. While balancing living in new environments, she quickly realized that community was how to survive. And by supporting each other, you thrive. Building community through dreams is Amanda's focus, both in the imaginal and physical realms. Whether you lucidly dream or you never dream, all are welcome. It's up to you to show dreams that you are ready to start the journey. That is so cool and so true. I'm like, I never thought of it that way, that you have to, I guess that really makes sense because if they are related directly to your healing, as we were talking about earlier before we started this interview, then you have like you can only experience as much as you're ready for. Ah, okay. Hi, Amanda. 
Hello. Thanks for being here today. Very excited to have you. I'm so excited to be here. I always enjoy being here with you. I enjoy it too. Thank you so much. I love that. And yes, I always have a good time hanging out. And I love that every time we talk, I always learn new things about you. You have such an interesting life. Um, I guess, so I'm like, I have so many questions, but because we only have a limited amount of time, tell me, how did you get into dream work first and foremost? Well, I have been a lifelong dreamer, meaning that since I was a child, I have memories of those dreams. In, in high school in a creative writing class, I was taught to use your dreams in your creative writing. And um, that was a fun activity that we did. But, and I remember that dream very well, but um, quite honestly, most of those ones from childhood just kind of went in and then they went out. And every now and again, you get those reminders about them. Um, and in my adult, coming up with these like blocks of, you know, you're at the water cooler, you talk about a dream or somebody shows up in your dream and you talk to them and, and people just kind of were like, Oh, like dreams don't mean anything. And so I started to shut them out um, until I finally decided it's time to grow. This is like, it, I'm standing in my own. This is the way that it needs to happen for me and dreams are it. And I started writing them down in a journal and then started learning to work with them. So it's been a, a fun journey. And now you help other people do the same. I absolutely do. And it is so much fun because everybody has a different dreaming style. And it's really fun to learn each style and find out what people like and what they don't like and what they do. And there's secret powers in dreams, quite honestly, which is really fun to see people step into. Yeah, I do think that dreams tell us a lot. I, I do have crazy dreams that I'm like, what did that mean? I know sometimes it's what I watched uh, before I went to bed and I'll, I watch friends a lot and uh, then they'll be in my dreams or like scenarios from the friends. But then there's like other crazy stuff that's in there as well. You and I have talked a lot about dreams because whenever we chat, I'm always like, yeah, I had this dream. What I love though, is that you were called to dream work. And this is, so I always like to like show Know how this happens for people like myself who was an explorer 12 mm -hmm. years ago and I didn't know really like what my purpose was or um, I didn't feel fulfilled and I was just confused and I'm like okay I feel like I was meant for something more what is it and I think we all get pulled and called to things that pique our interest which is you know part of right why I've created the membership is so that people can explore and try different things and get to know different parts of themselves and if they follow that curiosity or that interest like you did with dreams it kind of ends up naturally I see this pattern that then we become to teach what it was that helped us in our own self healing and journey. And so I just love that. That's, that's where you were because dreams is something I feel like a lot of people want to know about and they want to know what their dreams mean. And you, now we have you an expert in the network that can help people with that. And I'm super excited to talk about how we're going to help them with that later. But my first yeah. question is where do dreams come from? Dreams actually are, they're starting to actually do scientific studies on this, probably have already done many scientific studies on this. Uh, there's a whole section of science uh, that's called, I'm going to say this wrong, it's oneirology, oneirology, there we go. Oneirology is the study of dreams, and that is how they scientifically study them. And dreams themselves, they're finding are connected in the same area as your creative pathways. So the areas where memories come up, where you're remembering things, but also when you're thinking about a new idea, a new plan, something bigger. Um, so it's kind of this path of this creative um, journey that dreams are on or that they take you on. But dreams in what I've understood and what I've been taught through my uh, trainings that I've had very much connect back with your subconscious. That's where the messages come from. So your conscious is your everyday, daily 
awakeness and you interact with other people in your daily awakeness, awakeness of consciousness. And your subconscious is kind of those um, more core values, the things that really kind of push you and drive you in certain areas. And the way that it was connected for me through um, certain trainings that I've taken is that it's kind of more your soul direction. It's what your, like your soul's path. And so because it's not necessarily who you are on the outside in your day-to-day -day life, you often can stuff it away or like ignore it. Like dreams, when they come, dreams are there, but we don't always listen to them or know how to listen to them now. I was going to say, I don't know that it's that I don't listen to them. It's that I don't know what the heck they mean sometimes because they could be so weird and complex. Like um, I used to try to keep a dream journal. I think that was actually something you had told me. And then I stopped because it's a lot of work. I do better at doing little voice notes about my dreams. But there are some dreams like you were saying that leave just an imprint in my in my memory. And I'm like, whoa, that was so intense that I, I can't forget it. And also there's, I do have some reoccurring dreams as well. So basically it's what's hanging out in our subconscious. And so but like what I want to say right now, cause I started off saying that when I watch TV before I go to bed, sometimes I dream about that. And so this is why people say, what you consume, who you hang out with, what you read, what you watch, what you do, um, the people's words that are coming out of the mouth that are in the vicinity of where you are is so important because every single one of those things goes into our subconscious, whether we realize it or not, and can come back up and help to create beliefs, patterns, habits, all the things that are hanging out underneath in that subconscious area. So that's super powerful. So the dreams then are sending us those messages based off of what's hanging out in our subconscious, what wants to be recognized or talked to or shown, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it isn't necessarily the individual symbols that are what matters. Sometimes it is that that feeling that stays with you when you wake up that is the more overpowering message that you need in the dream. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. Okay, so we titled this Building a Relationship with Your Dream. So I, I think the first thing I would want to really dive into is why. Why is it important and why should we build a relationship with our dreams? That's a great question. And um, it's, it could be spoken about for probably days. Um, part of what my perspective with dreams is, is that we need to be receptive to dreams because it's it's our subconscious or our soul, our, our deeper self trying to communicate with us. It can see what's coming. It already knows the future, but we don't know it and we don't see it. And it's giving us these protectives or these ways to be able to shift and change. It's like, let me explain it the way that I've explained it before. It's like having your best friend, your partner, your sister or brother, like your sibling, somebody close to you like that, your parents, your grandparents, you know, any spiritual advisors you have, all wrapped up into one, one thing that knows you from all those perspectives. It knows when you've failed tests. It knows when you've done amazing on tests. It knows when you won the race. It knows everything about you. And it also knows all the feelings that you hold. So when, when dreams come about, it's pulling on all of those experiences to give you a message through symbolism and through wordplay and through all the things that come up in dreams. And it's our job to listen to them and try to understand at least a little bit what's being shown to us or said to us. So what's the outcome or like the results and benefits of building the relationship with your dreams? Like, what are you going to get from it? When you have a good relationship with your dreams, you'll have this flow of understanding. Um, and sometimes you won't even need to have dreams eventually because um, you, the whole point of the dreams is to communicate. But if you're in this flow of knowing and you're doing things in line with what your soul's purpose is, then you won't 
you be might get like a high five in your dream, like good job, way to go, woohoo. But you won't necessarily get all the warning messages, which is what comes up often when we don't listen to our dreams. So dreams that could be scary or um, shocking or uh, in your face. And, th and they're there for just drawing your attention to them, like pay attention to me. So. Okay. And then, so you said like the warning dreams, but also is there dreams that are sending like good and positive messages? Absolutely. I feel like there's a little bit of each kind of message in each kind of dream okay. where you get a little bit of you're on the right path, but here's somewhere where you can fix. It's just all, all in what you're ready for in the moment. Um, one idea of being able to have your dream journal gives you the chance to be able to look back on your dreams and then go back and look at them again later. So it's having this ability to reflect on them over time, starting from what the base dream was. And then, you know, I could look at my dream immediately the same day. And then I actually tend to look at them at the end of the month and just be like, what's my overall themes? that have happened in this month. And then at the end of the year, I do another annual check at my birthday, which is in July. And then one at, at the end of the year. So I kind of get these two perspectives, like what's my fiscal year of like 2022 like versus what's my birth year look like. Um, so these ways to be able to reflect back on your dreams. And then each time you look at them, you'll see something different. Like those, it's like, um like a holographic image where you see something different because that's what's aligned to you at that moment. And when you looked at it before, you might not have been ready to see that perspective that you're seeing now. That is very interesting. I've never thought about it that way. But now that you're saying that, I can think of some times recently where I've seen, this is a waking state, but seen a situation a certain way and was like, oh, it was this because of this, this, and this. And then some things shift and change and then I go, oh, wait, no, actually, maybe it was this, this, and this. So that made me think of that for the dreams is that I've never thought of it that way, that our dreams can mean something else later on at a different time. And so what I hear is uh, dreams are a form of communication with your soul and your subconscious, and um, they can be positive or negative. Uh, well, you said you said warnings, so they can be helping. They're guiding us either way. They could be giving us high fives. I heard. <laughs> yep. <Which is> funny. <laughs> um, yeah, because I was thinking when you were talking about the the warnings. I know I have had dreams that have startled me, woke me up, or was like, "What the hell." Um, I know people that have had nightmares, but then you also hear about like, oh, I was having such a good dream. Like I've woken up from times that I'm like, oh, I didn't want to wake up because it was so good, you know? Um, and then, so I love that you write and review your dreams. Do you have an example about something like, what have you gotten from that practice of like writing your dreams down and then reviewing them at the month and then again at the year? So when I write them down, first off for me, it's it's a fun game. I really enjoy doing recalls. It's called dream recalls. So you're remembering your dream from the moment you wake up and then going backwards because that's how we remember them. I'm, I'm really good at it, which is for some reason, I don't know why, maybe because of different, maybe because of my food inspection, being able to record my my inspections in a in a way that can be held up in court if necessary. Um, so, yeah, having these recalls, um, that practice of recall is really fun because it's also something that is part of your mindful practice, mindfulness practices, if that's what you do, um, being able to really focus in on certain tasks or focus in on the moment when you're in the moment. So you've just woken up from a dream and now you want to write it down. And then it's like, well, then what happened? And then what happened? And it, put you, it puts you right back into that spot so that you can feel it. And then it also builds on your, your language, your how do I transcribe what I see or saw into written words. So it's a lot of that, like connecting parts of us in different ways and putting it on in pen and paper or in the, the document notes or like an audio note however it is that you do your journaling practices. So it has these different ways to connect symbolism through your, 
pathways, like your neuro pathways, and then bringing it into something that's tangible that we understand, which is our own current language, which for me is English. And so it's, it's all encompassing. And when you write it down, sometimes you wouldn't notice something until you write it down and then leaving, leaving it and then coming back to it either a day later, a week later, or a month later gives you a new set of eyes on it. So you might notice something that you didn't notice before. And it could literally be a sentence that you wrote out that to you in the moment described exactly what you saw or experienced. But seeing it from a different time period gives you that outside perspective of, you know, maybe you're writing about where people are located in a room. And if you actually draw the picture of where the people are located, it might show you like physical shapes, like maybe it's a round table in a square room and people are at different points in it. And it, it's it's identifying those kind of symbols that show up in dreams that can be really helpful too in understanding what the dreams are meaning. Um, excuse me just a quick second. This is real life, people. Sorry, yeah. real life, yes. <laughs> The one that's on the counter. Okay, but ask Daddy for help. Jesus. <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm I don't have kids yet. <laughs> All right, are we good to go? Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just waiting on you because I, I don't know. I can't see. Um, oh, right. Yes. Okay, so what I hear basically is that our dreams are guiding us. And then I liked when you said that you go back and review what I heard from, from my perspective is that like, it's like putting puzzle pieces together almost like when you, so like I look at my journey of my bucket list. And then when I go back and look backwards, I'm able to see a map. And so that's kind of what I hear with the dreams too. Like if, and then you look at it and you can piece everything together and go, oh, that's what that meant. And then it's almost like they make more sense. And the better that you get at that, then you can start to be able to do that in the real time of when you write down a dream to be able to interpret to almost uh, have a map moving forward rather than seeing it after the fact. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, um, and even with the symbolisms that show up in your dreams. A lot of people like the dream dictionaries, which I pull another one off of my shelf. I do have, oh, and I just dropped things. I do have a number of them that give the actual description of symbols that show up in dreams. Oh, cool. But, but these are co collective symbols. These are symbols that show up in the most general sense. And the best description that I can give is the symbol of a dog. It symbolizes loyalty and um, friendship and and like that friendly aspect of yourself or like certain aspects within yourself. But somebody that has a good relationship with a dog versus somebody who really doesn't like dogs or was attacked by a dog as a younger person or whatever, they're going to have a whole different approach to what dogs are than what the collective approach is. So even just looking at the symbolism, is how it reflects on you. Again, this is all about building a relationship, your relationship with your own dreams so that you have the understanding. It's not meant to tell somebody else what's going on in their life, generally. <laughs> it's meant to help you with yours. And I say that because some people have that ability to dream about other people. Just like some people can fly in their dreams. Those are kind of those superpowers that I hinted at before. before. Ah, got you. Okay, so what I heard, so it's so funny, because I'm like hearing things in my way, right? Is that? Yeah. When you gave the dog example, it's like someone who has a fear of dogs is going to probably interpret that dog much different than someone that doesn't. And that's really interesting, because yeah. it makes me think of when I go to Google things I saw in my dreams. And I look around until I find the one that I feel fits. <laughs> and so yes. it's like, yeah. And that yeah. makes perfect sense because, um, and also 
the fact you that, have to like, feel it you have to feel it in your intuition if you don't feel it intuitively that yes this is my message forget the ones that don't make sense to you yes if so it resonates that, in your life yes but then the what I was going to follow up and say is that also when you were saying I don't even remember now if this is live or before uh, we started talking about how we will only be able to interpret and connect and build that relationship with our dreams as much as our body is willing to open up to. Um, because mm -hmm. if I don't want to look at the deeper meaning yet, I'm going to be like, oh, great, this dog, it's great. It's good news. It's, you know, and I'm going to be there. And then maybe once I've now shifted through that, and then I can look on hindsight and be like, oh, the dog really meant this. I just wasn't, you know, I wanted it to mean something else. Um, so anyways, that came up and I was but, like, oh, that's interesting too. <laughs> yes. And, um, but instead of saying, but instead of having the dog meaning be different and not necessarily correct. It was correct for the time that you looked it up. If you needed to hear from the dog that they're friendly and you need that friendliness right now, that's exactly the message you need. If that message is more of, hey, this is actually the particular like breed of dog and this breed means this about your personality and you look into that you know, six months later and you find out, oh, that is what my personality was at that time, it's, it's reflecting a whole a whole different perspective in that perspective's time. So yes, they can both be correct, just at different time periods. And the thing with dreams that is said, I think this might have been a biblical explanation or quote. I don't have the quote, so I'll just paraphrase. You can give a dream to 20 different dream interpreters, and you'll get 20 different meanings for the dream. And they'll all be correct, and they'll all come true in time. So, I believe it. That makes it's, perfect sense. It's really. Okay, so, go ahead. Sorry, that I was going to say that kind of speaks into tell your dreams to people who are safe. <laughs> and um, and then, yeah, being able to look at them with a little bit of of weight to them because they do come from a place. Some of them come from a place of watching TV. <laughs> And some yeah. of them come from a place of what you ate the night before. But again, this is what you're putting into your body. This is what you're exposing yourself to on a regular basis, whether it's visually, audibly, um, nourishment wise. So. Yeah. Okay. It's all making more and more sense the more we talk about it. So now I get it. It's piecing <laughs> all together for me. And hopefully if you're watching this, it's piecing together for you as well. So, cause I'm, I'm thinking of it in the terms of healers also. So like, if you get a reading, I do, I have done a lot of intuitive readings and just recently I was going through some things. And so I, I talked to like, I don't know, five different guides in the network and um, either I was on a session with them or we were in an interview or something. And like, I came up, what was going on with me? They all told me the same exact thing but all in different ways. And like, so that's exactly what you're saying is with the interpreters. And also it's, it's, we all have our own filter. So like when I'm doing this interview, I'm always speaking to people through my filter of my beliefs, my patterns, my habits, my everything, my knowledge, my awareness. And um, yeah, so it, it's so cool to see it. It's very parallel to that. And dreams are also part of the healing process, um, at least of what we were talking about earlier. I was going to ask you another yeah, question, but since I just brought that up, I'm just going to trust that we should go there. So how can dreams okay. help you heal and um, build a relationship with yourself and get to know yourself better and uh, all of those things? A great, fantastic exercise for setting intentions, because I'm sure anybody on a healing path has some form of um, intention setting whether it's monthly or daily or in the moment, you can take that intention and you can put it on a piece of paper and you can put it under your pillow and sleep on it, literally. Just read it before you go to bed and ask your personal guides, whether it's um, spirit or the universe or however you speak to whatever higher entities that are out there, 
you use that as a moment where you can say, I'd like some guidance and healing. This is the intention that I'm setting for it. And please help me in my sleep. And it doesn't have to show up in a dream. It can be if you don't, if you don't dream, don't think that it hasn't worked, because it's still going in. Um, if you'd like to do it over a couple of days, if you want to do it for the whole month, that's up to you. But as you're sleeping, um, you can actually work through problems. That's, that's part of the reason for your sleep as well, is to be able to heal, is to be able to um, uh, file away the stuff that happened during the day. And, and part of this also is being able to heal on that higher level. Um, when we're awake, we're thinking out of our conscious mind, which is very analytical. And this is being able to go into that deeper state and, and heal things on the, mm, on the subconscious level to be able to find ways to manage in your life or find ways to really excel in life. I love that. Um, so my next question was going to be, I had wrote down, can you control... And then I push, I don't like that word. So slash steer your dreams. And you literally just said that with setting an intention before you go to bed of things that you want to heal or get answers to and doing that consistently every day before bed. I've set up myself a nighttime routine, but then I end up not doing it. Sometimes I do it and then I'll watch TV, but I want to, I am working to, I'm slowly working. I don't know that I'm really ready. Um, but to do a routine before I go to bed so that my dreams are different and I can get answers and I can um, do healing. And one thing that keeps coming up in my mind, so I'm going to share because it must be someone that needs to know it, is uh, I see patterns in my dreams. And when you really start to become conscious of your dreams, and because I have people like you in my life that remind me to do this, um, that I can see. So when I'm stressed in life, I have dreams of being a server. I was a server for a long portion of my life, uh, a waitress. Mm -hmm. And yep. um, I, it'll be very stressful where there's more tables than I can serve. And this is what would ha literally happen in my physical reality. When I was a server, maybe they would cut the floor early. So there was only like three of us left for the night. And we'd have a rush with a full restaurant of like, a crap ton of tables and five tables for one person is a lot. I used to not think that until I was a server and I was like, oh my gosh. And then, you know, or you have the dreams where you go home and you're like, shoot, I forgot to bring table 12, their ranch. And so those like that real life situation has now manifested that when I'm having stress in my life, I dream that stressful situation into my, and so into my dreams, which then can show me that maybe I need some stress management, some more relaxation, some uh, techniques to help me de-stress. Um, so I felt very compelled that I was supposed to share that. There's another reoccurring dream that I have, and I'm not sure yet what it means, but it's something to do with going to the bathroom in public place and like it being a mess or like not having toilet paper or something like, and I, I'm sure it's probably related to stress. Also, you're you like have a smile, but it comes well, up all the time. <laughs> I want to, I want to, sorry, is it okay if I address both of those? Absolutely. Yes, please. Thanks. Cool. Um, I think that that service that being in that serving dream is very, it speaks very much to what you're currently doing. I don't know if you've had the dream recently, you are in service to others. You are connecting other people. You are the connection between those tables, right? You're bringing nourishment to people at their table. Nourishment being food in the dream, but in reality, it is that soul food, right? That nourishment on that soul level. So you are that connection. You're the person in that center position to get those people what they need. And, and, I don't know if you've had this dream recently or not, but it's kind of being able to balance what waitresses do with their tray, right? Balance all the, the food, the nourishment, the whatever, the bill taking, the checking on orders and, and getting everything right. You're balancing all of that for all of, all of your clients. And so that's really cool that that's showing up, especially if you've been a connector for more than just the, the connected um soul network time period so yeah that's really cool 
That is cool. And then, but it always shows up when I'm stressed. It's like it's a it feel it's a feeling of stress. So it's like I'm yeah. missing the balance because I'm stressed. So, but I like how you said like yeah, uh, yeah. that analogy of serving people um, because it is, and I'm that person, and I'm literally doing all the tables. But it's a feeling of. I see that it happens when I'm stressed in life. And then in my dream, I'm also super stressed. And then I wake up with a really cleansed jaw because I'm like, ah, so, yeah. so I need balance in my life at, during those times. And it's taking, it's taking a memory, an active memory that you've had, something that you've actually experienced and bringing it into the current state right now saying, Hey, you were stressed then now you're stressed in the same way here. And it's kind of showing you that parallel and what might not have worked in the past, you might have new tools to use now. So it could just be the, that trigger to say, Hey, go take a bath today, sit down and relax or, or go for a walk on the, on the boardwalk or whatever. Yes. I love that. Yeah. And you're so, it's so cool. Cause yes, it took an exact situation out of my life that had happened multiple times. So it was yeah. reimprinted in my brain. And I remember those nights I would go home on those really stressful nights when I felt that I, I literally could not give any more than I physically like had. And mm -hmm. I would have like crazy dreams those nights or not sleep good and stuff. And now they show back up when it's happening in my life. Although I'm no longer technically a server, but I love that you said I'm still serving and I am so in a cool. different way, in yeah. a different way. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I think I probably have had it recently. I couldn't tell you um, personally, but that, and then, okay. Tell me about the bathroom dream. Cause that one, it's like all these different places, like the movie theater so, one time. I am just like, what is going on? So one of what I what I have hinted at is that there are certain dreams or certain dreamers that have ways that are kind of like superpowers, little things that they can do in their dreams that are a little more superpowerish. And what I have found, and this is my personal connection, and I'm not sure that I've found it in any specific dream book, but my connection with the bathroom or with washing my face or hands or any of that thing. That is a precursor. It's kind of like a clue for me while I'm dreaming. So you were talking about, can you be aware? Can you manipulate your dreams? I don't like manipulating my dreams, but you can. Because you're going to get the same answer either way. Whether you want to have that outcome or not, you're going to get the outcome that your subconscious wants to give you. So <laughs> why fight it? Um, sorry, digression. The bathroom for me is a symbol of preparing myself excuse me myself um for an experience that's coming next so in the bathroom for me if you're using the toilet if you're like you're you're getting rid of the waste from your body in whatever way that is you're you're cleansing your body of waste if you're washing your hands or face you're cleansing your body of dirt and so it's a cleansing dream because the next dream for me or the next scene from the dream is always a dream with somebody who has passed away in my, my experience. It's somebody who has come back from the spirit side to talk to me, they say how they say it and what that message is. Try to write it down as exact as you can because they're, they're direct divine downloads. So. Okay, that's interesting. I'm going to be more um, cognizant now when it happens and see what follows that. And I like when you were talking um, yeah. before you even said what you thought it meant, I was hearing release. And I never, ever, ever equated that before. So I'll have to see what's happening, yeah. like if it's a purge or release or something. Whereas the bathroom yeah. and other dreams for yeah. me used to mean um, a gateway to the spiritual world or past lives. And so when I would yeah. end up in my bathroom at my old apartment, that meant I was usually going into a past life or um, cool. connecting cool. with spirits. So to two totally different bathroom scenarios. Um, so they, that's where but again, doing the same thing. In the, in the spiritual leveling up though, you have to be able to release something in order to move forward. So I think that that's still connected. Yeah. 
Yeah. So it's kind of if you have a dream where you're in a bathroom or you wake up after washing yourself or bathing or swimming or whatever, kind of see if there's a follow up dream afterwards or even what happens when you're doing that. Is there a certain thought that keeps coming up? Are you having a conversation with anybody? What are you looking for? Because those things will be clues that can yeah. guide you. Okay, good yeah. to know. When I was having the dreams that uh, it was the bathroom at my old apartment, I wasn't doing anything in the bathroom. I would just end up in the bathroom and then I would walk out and it would be in a different, it was like a different house, but the same bathroom. What I found oh, out, cool. um, yeah. this is off topic, but I'll just mention it, is that there was actually a portal that was open in my other house and it was very spiritual house. I had a lot of weird, crazy spiritual things happen there. Um, I don't have the bathroom dream to walk into other dimensions or past lives anymore or I haven't had in a really, really long time. It was mostly when I lived there. So it's so interesting. I love all of it. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. let's talk about how to work with your dreams. So we're yeah. gonna talk in general, but we also have some events coming up. You have your dream circle we're gonna talk about and coaching with you. So let's yeah. talk about it. Great, well, it, you don't need to do anything other than start paying attention to them. That's the first step. It's almost like an invitation at that point. When you start, oh, I should have brought my dream journal here and I did not. I will pretend this is my dream journal. If you put your dream journal down beside your bed and you have it there with a pen ready, open it up and you put it right there to a brand new page. There we go, brand new page and it's ready. And you set that on your bedside, nine times out of 10, you're gonna get a dream. And the reason why is you've now shown that in the real world, and like in the tangible world, in the awake world, I'm trying to come up with a word that's correct or, or not, yes, reflective of what it is. So if you open this up in the awake world, it shows your subconscious, because your subconscious is aware all the time, right? It's showing, you're showing your subconscious, I'm ready to listen. I have got my pen already clicked. It's like it's open and it's in the page and it's ready. Now I'm going to go to sleep and do whatever you do for your nighttime routine. Personally, mine involves um, at least saying one or two, one or two prayers that preps me for sleep. Um, it could be your intentions. It could be putting um, like a crystal by your bed that's going to be supportive to it. Whatever it is that your routine is. Do your bedtime routine, set the book, go to sleep. And as you fall asleep, if a dream comes, it comes. If it doesn't, don't get upset in the morning when you wake up. Say, thank you. I tried. I'll try again tonight. And just allow it. Um, if you try too hard, then sometimes that can be pushing back as well. Now, I do have something free on my website that's called this little, I called it a dream handbook. And it just has a bunch of different tips and tricks inside that you can use that are just nice and easy. And I'll read one or two out for when you write your journal uh, prompts for your journal entries of your dream. There's just little reminders. When recording your dream, include any of the following that are relevant to your dreamscape. Dreamscape, as in settings, who's who, who's present, who are you, how do they or you appear? What size? How close? Um, what's the plot? Um, does something repeat? What's the frequency that things show up in? Um, so yeah, this just gives you a little, a little something, and I usually keep it in my dream journal. I actually keep one in my dream journal. I know this isn't my journal, but I do use it because every now and again you feel like a little bit of, you know, you need a bit of a shake up in your routine, and this has little tips and tricks. There's also some um, sleep routine tips on the inside. How do you get, how do you make your bed space inviting for sleep and dreams and all of that? That sounds awesome. I will make sure to link yeah. that. Um, so you can visit Amanda's website and download the little dream brochure. Is I don't know what you called it. <laughs> I called it a handbook. Handbook. <laughs> it's not really dream a book. It's like a pamphlet. <laughs> Dream yeah. pamphlet. That's what we'll call it. Um, you do have an upcoming book, though, yeah? 
I do. It's probably about six months out before it gets onto shelves. Um, it is called Dreams, the Language of Your Soul. Ooh, that's so good. Okay, we're just going to set that there, telling the universe it's on its way and let people know. Um, yeah. Let's talk about, so tomorrow you are going to be the featured speaker at the Call to Connect events. We'd love to invite everybody to come to Call to Connect. It's my connection event, my monthly connection event. It's from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Wednesday, uh, February 15th. Amanda is our featured speaker, and she will be talking about how to befriend your dreams. So it's just a short little 10 minute spot, but more information. It's good to rehear information and always get more tips and tools. Um, we're always taking in so much information. We can only really consciously remember so much. That's why repetitiveness is very important. But then we are going to be doing a actual event, you and I together, on the 14th of March from 5 to 7 p.m. And that one is going to be uh, how to work with your dreams and you are going to do a hot seat coaching with one person and you're going to work with their dreams and then everyone's going to work along side and they'll have to bring a dream, right? Yeah. If you have a dream to bring, that's great. If you don't have a dream to bring, I do have, um, an example dream that you can work with that kind of touches on a bunch of different aspects that you want to pay attention to in your dream. Um, and that it walks you through, like we'll walk through the process of being able, once you've written out your dream at night or in the morning when you wake up, <clears throat> this is an activity that you can do that will pull out some of the main themes of your dream so that you can have a, like a big picture of what's going on and what it's trying to tell you. So that will be a practical exercise to be able to do it. And then in our session, there should be enough time for me to do a live coaching session with somebody um, with their dream. So you can get us get to see what it's like in a in a coaching session. Yes. And I love when you get to see so I love learning through stories and examples. So when you get to see one happening live, it'll also help you to interpret and go, oh, yeah, that for me, like this might mean this or whatever the case might be. And so you have your dream and then you can see how she does it in the real time. Um, so members do are free for all these events and they do get priority for any coaching and readings that happen. So um, that's why you should just become a member of the Connected Soul Network. If you're not a member, we still invite you to join. It's only $15, super cheap and affordable. And then let's talk about your dream circle. So if someone is watching this and they're like, oh my gosh, I need to know more about my dreams. I'm interested in dreams in general, or I just have this one thing that's bothering me, like, tell us about the dream circle and how um, it's going to work and what and we have a special offer for anybody that's watching this connected in my network, you don't have to be a member of the connected soul network to receive this offer because it's your lucky day. Um, but we'll talk about that at the end. I just want to say that because I was super excited yeah. that you offered that for everybody. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yeah, so the, a dream circle is um, a regular group of people that come together and we, we do those dream, um, the dream sessions in community. So it would, meet, it would be meeting once a week for eight weeks. So our group community will be together for that eight week period. Um, dreams are really great to be worked with in a community because interactively each person has something that they can share each person gets something out of what's happening in that space and also because we're in community we will start dreaming about each other and we can share that with each other or we can set an intention of a dream we'll set one person to dream for the whole group and then we can share it so there's fun things that we can do in the atmosphere of a dream circle so it will be a closed community for that eight week period so you need to sign up for week one to be able to then see it all the way through for the eight weeks. It's starting on March 21st, the next round. And there will be two different time periods offered if you'd rather be during the day or if you'd rather be meeting in the evening, but you'll be in that group for the whole time period. And so yeah, in that community, you'll have the ability to meet other people who are also dreamers. 
and be able to connect with each other. And uh, we will work with dreams in that space. And what do you think if someone attends this, like what are they gonna get out of it? I can only speak of my own experience. I have learned so much in being in community because you just never know what you don't know. <laughs> and that's, I think that was the biggest thing for me to learn is that coming into dreams and learning about dreams, I didn't even know where to look for information, which is part of the reason why I wrote my book. My book is literally like, if I'm learning how to work with dreams, how do I find the stuff I need to find? And what, what do I need to know? So it's really, it's really just learning from each other, finding that space of commonality between everybody and place to grow where you have other like-minded people that also follow and understand the same direction that you're going and we can do it all together. And all the while you will be learning how to interpret and work with your dreams throughout the eight weeks as well, right? Yeah, so I, I don't like using the word interpret uh, personally, um, but it's more or less like that. I like to work with dreams, so that's why I called myself a dream worker. Um, dream interpretation has its own set of um, strictness to it. Uh, like once an interpretation has been done, it can't be undone. Whereas if you're working with dreams, it's it's a fluid movement. It's it's something that evolves as you work with it. So I like to keep it open and fluid and moving um, instead of setting it with uh, interpretation where it's kind of locked in. Um, but either way, yes, we would be working with dreams. We will be discussing dream symbols. We can discuss things that come up as a group. There will be um, certain things that get set up based on what the week is that we're in. And then there's also going to be free time where we can um, either go into breakout rooms or talk to one another in a more casual sharing kind of environment. Okay, I love what you said about the interpretation. It's like a, a box and thing. So thank you. And um, so what I would like to say is if you'd like to continue building a relationship with your dreams, then the dream circle would be for you. Does that work better? And then you froze. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. I'm like my promotional pitch. It was so good. Amanda, come back. All right. I don't know if she's here or not. So I will keep talking. Um, if you are interested in the dream circle, you can check the caption for the link to sign up. It is $150. It's an eight week program. That's literally less than $20 a session. And she's giving a discount of $50 to uh, my community. Anybody that's comes across this and the coupon code is going to be connected and you will be able to use that coupon code to receive $50 off. So it's only a hundred dollars. That's crazy. Um, such a good deal. Eight weeks, two hours uh, session and um, one time a week that you'll meet. And I think it's going to be on Tuesdays. So if you're interested, click the caption. Now, Amanda does also do one on one coaching. So if you are looking to dive more into your dreams on your exploration, discovery and healing journey, she can help you with that. You can set up a free call to see if she is a good fit for you and also vice versa. Always want it to be a good fit, has to feel good, feel safe and be um Aligned. Yeah. For the soul alignment. Uh, and she is happy to have a free discovery call to see if that is the soul alignment fit or not. Uh, that link is in the caption as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, she's back. Let me pull her back up. Are you back? Yeah, oh gosh. I am. I like gave the greatest like promotional pitch sentence and um, and then you were frozen. And so I was like, oh, like it was like all built up like, OK, this is what I said. Just so you know, I said, if you are interested in wanting to continue building a relationship with your dreams, then the dream circle is for you. And then I was like, did that feel better? And then you were frozen. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Let's build so some relationship with our dream. 
In the dream circle, you will continue this relationship building with your dreams. You will get some tools. You will get live practice, interaction. And uh, I did give them all the details. I told them about the discount and the coupon code for uh, anyone that sees this or reads this before it starts. Fantastic. It was connected. And then um, I did share that you are doing coaching one-on-one um, yes. for people that Thank want you. to dive deeper and have just ma- a more private space. And then that they can set up a discovery call and they can click on the caption for that as well. Perfect. I covered Perfect. it all while you were gone. So, but then Thank I saw you, you call back in, So I was like, let me, let me pull her back up. Anything else you want to add before we wrap it up right now? Yeah. In the the private sessions, the one-on-one calls, I actually am able to, uh, we're able to get a little more um, personalized in the dream work. Um, We can go into things like embodiment. We can go into like, where is it in your body that this sensation, feeling, whatever is holding on to you. And we can also go and discover things within the dream, like portals like what you were talking about in the bathroom about portals. Okay. Where is the portal taking us? What is this symbolizing? How does it work? So it becomes much more of a personalized scenario. And quite honestly, the best advice that has been unanimous around most of the dream research that I've looked into is that you need to build your own community, your community, the one that is, closest with you the people who know you the best are the ones that can help you best with your dreams yes you can hire somebody like me and I will gladly help you and support you but having a team around you that is also supportive will be a hundred times better being able to have your companions and your your people that are close that is a hundred percent very true and yes having a safe space to explore and to heal and to grow is very important. So thank you for adding that in. Check the captions for all the links. And thank you for joining us today, everybody. We appreciate you, your time, your energy, and your presence. And thank you, Amanda, for making time for us today and coming back. Thanks for coming back. (laughs) I cracked myself up. (laughs) All right, everyone. Have an amazing day. Happy Valentine's Day. And we will talk to you soon. Bye.